Hello and welcome. Our team will be presenting about the development of a manufacturing system for bulk metallic glass wires. My name is Peter Daniel Tabangin and my colleagues are Bardo Amaya, Wilkin Chan, Edwin Lopez, Christopher Pania, and Fabiola Sanchez. The sponsor for the project is the Advanced Material and Manufacturing Laboratory at California State University, Los Angeles. The advisor for the project is Dr. Musa Nashragi. We also worked with David Reyes Ramirez, who is our advisor's intern. Next slide. All right. To begin the breakdown of our team, it consists of Peter being our team leader for this project, as well as Dr. Ashragi being our advisor. We split up the workload of the, this project into three teams, consisting of the simulation team, which has Fabs and Peter, the electrical team, which has Bardo and the design team, which has Edwin, Wilkin, and myself. Next slide. Bulk metallic glass is a metal that has been super cooled as to not form a crystalline structure as shown in the images to the top right of this slide. This super cooling process is called vitrification and the metal that we will be using is vitriloid 106, a zirconium based metal. One reason why we're using this one to turn into a bulk metallic glass is because it's relatively low critical cooling rate. Next slide. Um, BMG is special because it has a high yield strength a high and a high elastic properties allowing it to be used in a wide range of purposes. Um, bulk metallic glasses also possess a low Young's modulus, as you can see in our stress strain graph of VIT Vitrilloy 106 when it compared to AISI 1008 steel. Next slide. Bulk metallic glass does not undergo solidification shrinkage like other metals, so it, it is able to retain the shape of its mold. Due to it not having a crystalline structure, it is resistant to plastic deformation, meaning that it will almost always bounce back to its original shape. It also has high corrosion resistance, making it ideal to use in environments that could corrode other metals. BMG is also highly durable. Um, the Play the video for me, please. Um, this video shows how BMG's high elastic limit allows the ball on the right to continue bouncing longer than the ball on the left. Next slide, please. Some application of bulk metallic glasses are that they can be used to make surgical equipment, cast a micro gear, um, make a pressure sensor in cars, as well as artificial joints and space shuttle shielding for re-entry into the atmosphere. Um, next slide, please. Um, due to our team making wires out of bulk metallic glasses, we did some research into what they could be used for. And we mostly discovered that they could be used to make energy sources like solar cells, batteries, and fuel cells more efficient. This is mostly due to its high corrosion resistance that keeps the wires from degrading. Next slide, please. The objective of this project is to develop a manufacturing system for wires and springs out of bulk metallic glass, uh, more specifically, Vitrilloy 106 in this case. Next slide. Some of the requirements included uh, an enclosed system. A reason is uh, to purge all the oxygen and replace it with argon as oxygen can interfere with the process for making bulk metallic glass by causing it to oxidize and corrode. Another requirement included rapid uh, cooling rate. Supercooling molten bulk metallic glass is what causes vitrification. Vitrilloy 106 requires a cooling rate of 1.75 degrees per second. We also needed an induction heater. You cannot use conventional ways to melt bulk metallic glass as it will require the use of oxygen. And so an induction heater with, uh, generates varying magnetic fields, which heats metallic ob objects without the use of oxygen. It, it was also required to use a slow flow rate. 
Ideally, we want a laminar flow of the molten bulk metallic glass to minimize splashing and to have control of the molten bulk metallic glass as it lands on the copper mold. Lastly, uh, we required a low RPM on the copper mold. Uh, this helped the molten BMG stick to the copper mold as it vitrified. To not overheat the copper mold, it was necessary uh, to have a low RPM as well, as it can change the necessary heat transfer for the vitrification of vitriloid 106. Next slide. In the beginning of the project, we were introduced to a design concept and some of the main components included the induction furnace, the groove copper mold, the crucible, and then enclosure. Next slide. And so with that being said, we were, we were able to create a preliminary design for bulk metallic glass wire system and a spring system. Uh, in the illustration to the left, you can see uh, a wire making system for bulk metallic glass. On the right is a preliminary design for the system for making springs out of bulk metallic glass. Next slide. So in order to produce a metallic glass wires, um, we have developed a design system below. Um, a, a solid piece of a BMG, which you are 106, will be put in a crucible and melted down by an inductor. As the BMG is melted, a lever arm will help drive the flow of vitriol 106 through gravity. And the lever arm will serve to stop the flow when we deem necessary. So as the BMG flows out from the crucible, it will be flow onto a rotating copper drum. The copper drum will have a groove of the size of two millimeters in which will be rotating and the wire will be removed by an, a small knife along the groove. As the, the wire is flowing along that knife, there, it will be coiled up by the wire collector system, as you see on the figure in the right. Um, an arm attached to a NEMA 14 motor will be rotating the wire collector system. As, the, as soon as the arm catches the wire, it will be, begin rotating, driven by the NEMA 14 motor, as the copper mold is rotating at a similar rate, but driven by the NEMA 32 motor. A, a temperature sensor will be continually monitoring the temperature of the copper mold to ensure that the, we are achieving a necessary temperature gradient to ensure the co co cooling of the metallic glass wires to form the morphous structure needed that defines metallic glass. Next slide. Uh, but because metallic glass is very reactive with oxygen, we have decided on an enclosure called a flexible welding enclosure built by Huntington Fusion. It is a low cost enclosure, only co um, the cost of it being $4,637 compared to other enclosures we have looked at that have stuck in the in the five-figure range with some being as uh, around 15,000, but many compared to this, which is beyond our budget. Um, other um, things that we gain from this enclosure is the customizability. We could add more ports to allow more flow of argon gas to be pumped into enclosure. We could add our more ports to insert our arms into it. Uh, we could make the enclosure wider, taller, so it's very customizable and the cost is very reasonable because um, as we looked at the enclosure sizes, as each size change, it was only a couple hundred dollars, which is, so if we were to make any dramatic changes, we know we will still be within reasonable bulk, bulk cost. Also, since it allows us to access from the outside, we can make any changes to, if something fails in this enclosure, we, are have, we have access directly without risking of any air going inside. Also, the system is able to remove air up to 10 ppm. So majority of the air is pumped out of the enclosure, allowing for BMG to be wires to be created without any reaction to oxygen. Next slide. So as mentioned earlier, we cannot use conventional heating methods to mold bulk metallic glass because it's highly reactive to oxygen. So we would the way to get around that would be to use an, to use an induction furnace. And induction furnace is very simple to um, understand. It's just a coil of wire with alternating current flowing through it. 
um, these flowing cur this alternating current produces powerful magnetic fields that induce a voltage in that in this case an iron rod in that image I mean, I'm sorry that video which in turn produces eddy generates eddy currents within the workpiece these eddy currents like to accumulate on the surface of the rod and this phenomenon known as joule heating just continues to heat it until it just melts and here it's just the equation used to describe what's going on we have Faraday's law of induction which is um, it vol an induced voltage is equal to the number of turns times the mag the derivative of the magnetic flux with respect to time and just how eddy current in the bottom of that is Ohm's law which just shows us how eddy currents are generated due to that induced voltage as for the induction first we have several options to uh, we have searched for several options we have US solid MTI carbon easy heat however one of, the, one of the issues that we had is is we're trying to look for uh, an induction fire that's both inexpensive and also abides by safety uh, school safety policy so we have yet to find one yet and they're still looking now for one and here is an overall system view of the components we'll be using and we have a thermocouple to acquire data from the disk in the bottom left corner you can see the image of the disk right there with the red circle that's the hole where the thermocouple will be plugged in this thermocouple will be connected to an AD8495 module which is just a signal amplifier that helps the Arduino Uno read those signals and the Arduino Uno will also be driving stepper drivers these will be used to drive the motors needed to collect the disk in this case the NEMA 23 will, will rotate the disk and the NEMA 17 will collect the wire And so ANSYS simulations were created to assist the manufacturing efforts. First, we created a transient thermal simulation to calculate the cooling rate and compare it to the critical cooling rate uh, required to vitrify within the material. Then we created an ANSYS fluent simulation to analyze the fluid mechanics behavior. And so on the left here, this graph discusses how normal metals shrink as they solidify and form crystalline structures. Bulk metallic glasses are great candidates for casting because they do not shrink as they solidify, they do not lose any volume, and they instead form glassy amorphous structures. On the right, this is the properties of vitrile 106, most notably our melting temperature at 900 degrees Celsius, our glass transition temperature at 400 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature where vitrile 106 uh, solidifies and forms the amorphous crystal uh, amorphous structures, the critical cooling rate, which is 1.75 degrees Celsius per second, and the latent heat of fusion, which is 115,000 joules per kilograms, which is the amount of energy required to undergo the phase change from solid to liquid. And so this is our ANSYS plate setup. To keep it simple, we made it a transient conduction system, transient meaning thermal changes in respect to time and conduction meaning two solid bodies thermally interacting. To also keep it simple, there are no phase changes in the simulation. And to reiterate, the goal is to calculate the cooling rate. The parameters of vitrile 106 wire and copper mold are here as shown. On the left here, this is our ANSYS mesh setting applied to the simulation. And on the right is the ANSYS simulation video showing the bulk metallic glass uh, wire cooling down over time. And this is a looped video. Next slide, please. And so this is our results from ANSYS. How we calculated the cooling rate was how we took the slope from 900 degrees Celsius melting temperature to 400 degrees Celsius glass transition temperature. And the results that yielded from this was the cooling rate of about 1900 degrees Celsius per second, which um, more than qualifies the vitrific uh, critical cooling rate, which is 1.75 degrees Celsius per second. Next slide, please. This is our ANSYS disk setup, similarly to the plate setup. Uh, this design was created to be um, similar to the design team SOLIDWORK assembly, and it was also kept simple by making it a transient conduction heat transfer with no phase changes, with the same goal to calculate the cooling rate. And the parameters of the ring and mold are here as shown. 
Uh, on the left is the mesh settings applied to the simulation. And on the right is the uh, Vitrolite 106 ring cooling down over time. It is also a looped video. Uh, similarly, how we calculated the cooling rate, we took the slope from 900 degrees Celsius melting temperature to 400 degrees Celsius glass transition temperature. The cooling rate calculated was around the 3,200 range to around the 3,500 range, which it more than qualifies uh, for the critical cooling rate of 1.75 degrees Celsius per second. The goal of the fluid simulation is to analyze the fluid dynamics behavior of the molten BMG. To determine whether the material will have a laminar or turbulent flow, we calculated its Reynolds number. Using the parameters of the disk design, the team calculated the theoretical speed of the molten BMG. The speed, of, the speed was derived from the circumference of the disk and the number of revolutions per minute. The theoretical speed of the molten BMG is 0.66 meters per second. If the molten BMG fills up the groove on the copper mold, the calculated Reynolds number was 1.058, which gives the molten BMG a laminar flow. Next slide. The system is placed in an enclosed environment. Therefore, argon gas was set as a default fluid in the simulation. The outlet of the crucible, which is the inlet of the simulation, is placed 20, meters, 20 millimeters above the plate. The molten BMG was set to flow at 0.66 meters per second at a temperature of 900 degrees Celsius. The molten BMG was set to flow onto the mold for three seconds and the simulation continued for another 17 seconds to let the BMG cool down. Next slide. The video on the left shows the flow of the material. As seen on the video, splashing occurred when the molten BMG made contact with the surface of the copper mold. This suggests that the speed of the molten DMG needs to be reduced. The video on the right shows the temperature contour of the fluids within the, the domain. The BMG did not cool down as quickly as the transfer model did, but it still cooled down at a higher rate than the critical cooling rate. Next slide, please. Due to the pandemic, the simulation team was limited to working with their personal computers, which are not suited for complex simulations. A complex simulation includes translation or rotation, fluid dynamics, and heat transfer. The current simulation only involves fluid dynamics and heat transfer. Vitrolite 106 is a fairly new alloy, and the team had limited information. Since we did not have accurate values for, the, for each property, the team was unable to create a very accurate simulation slide. To conclude the presentation, the, the objective of the project is to develop a manufacturing system for bulk metallic glass wires. The design team designed two manufacturing systems, one to manufacture wires and another to manufacture spring. However, due to time constraints, the team was only able to develop the wire design. The electrical team was tasked with searching for an induction furnace, thermal sensors, and motors. The induction furnace will be installed at a school facility and strict guidelines were followed while searching for an induction furnace. At this time, there was no induction furnace that was found that was within budget and followed the guidelines that the school provided. The simulation team simulated a transient heat transfer model and a fluid dynamics model. The transient model verified that the copper mold can cool down the BMG. The fluid dynamics model showed some splashing. The splashing indicates that the speed of that the speed needs to be reduced. The simulation also showed that the copper mold was able to cool down the BMG at a higher rate than the critical cooling rate. Next slide. For questions or comments, we are available on May 7th during the systems session number one. Thank you for giving us your time and for listening to our presentation.